Welcome to episode 21 of Slot Cars. What character? This is the uh, series that I have that um, takes a look at cars that are not um, your usual slot cars. You know, your your normal race cars or street cars that you see made into slot cars. Uh, in this series, I like to feature cars that are more out of the norm of, you know, the slot car range, but still very fascinating and very unique. And in this episode, I want to delve into something that is not just like one type of uniqueness. This is a whole brand of cars. Um, these are the Aurora Thunderjets, and they were made in the 1960s, starting from 63 to about 1972. And uh, they are fascinating. And uh, stay tuned because... Uh, Hopefully you can learn something and, and get I can get a lot of people interested in this because it's a fascinating series. Um, they're, they're charming. I, I don't know how to describe it, them other than they're charming and they have this simplistic beauty. And just knowing that they are over 50 years old and in a lot of cases over 60 years old is just fascinating to me. I happen to be, I was born in late 1963, and these were created that year and released that year. So some of these are have been on this planet longer than I have, which just is fascinating in itself on how they survived. Uh, they did make millions of these, so there's, thank goodness, there's plenty that are still in existence and uh, in various stages of, you know, of where, some have been held pristine in cases on shelves for decades and uh, now they're starting to make their way out or they have made their way out to other collectors and it's something that hopefully doesn't end for a long long time of people collecting these and and driving them on their tracks and just having a lot of fun with them because they really are a lot of fun and for one thing these kind of fit they're, they're kind of a little bit outcast as HO cars with modern HO cars and, and, and how modern HO cars race in that with modern HO cars, there it seems like magnetic racing is the way to go. Stronger magnets, let those cars stick to the track. They whiz around at, you know, over a thousand scale mile per hour speed and just fly around to where you could barely see them, just a streak going around and I don't know that that's what a lot of HO is has come to in recent in modern days and a lot of people love that and that's great a lot of people are turned off by that and that's understandable um, I love everything so don't go by me but I love this where cars can drift out a little bit and you could see cars and it's challenging going around a turn not just blurs but that's just me I'm fine with everything uh, though um, for larger scale people, um, a lot of larger scale racers don't like magnets. In fact, remove magnets from their cars. So um, this might be more up their alley than HO racers, which is it's it's a really unique uh, sandwich in between both of those scales, or the larger scales and the HO scales, in that. These cars are they they drift. They don't have the strong magnetism, and the eight and the larger scale guys love that. A lot of them anyway, and this might be exactly what they need to get them into HO. So if you are a larger scale racer or collector or just driver or lover or whatever, and you were thinking about HO, this might be the way to go to get you involved and to get you to really love HO because it's just, it's fascinating. And after this little video, I'm going to take a car around here and show you how they go. And um, I want to delve into this. Um, I'm a collector and I also take everything out and I drive it around the track. I don't race them because... I have others that I would race, and I don't want to touch these to race, but they're all out. Every car I have gets out of the case and goes for a spin every so often. I'll take them out like I am today. I'm 
taking inventory today on exactly what I have and what I need. Uh, being a collector, and here's a, here's a tip for people who are collecting, if you're just getting into it or if you just, if you have a couple and want a little bit more and you're not sure how to go on your collections yet, um, I would say take a step back before you delve into it. Take a step back and analyze without, what's out there. I'm going to help you, hopefully, uh, determine how to get your collection started, what you're going to be looking for, and um, just what would be more of interest to you. And um, because uh, yeah, there's, there's probably a thousand or more different um, models with different color variations, and that, that's quite a bit. There are some people that may collect every single variation ever made, and that's, that's incredible that they could do that. That's just not something that I could do. Or I don't think most people could do. So you kind of have to figure out, like I said, take a step back and see what's, you know, with your budget, what your interests are, and, uh, st and go from there. Now, in my case, I'm not interested in getting every variation. I, I, it, that's just too much for me, and I love too many different slot cars to, to do that. So I, my interest, when I took my step back, was to, first of all, pick up this book. This thing will, I'll show you through this, this will um, really help you determine what uh, cars are, are out there, or what's available. Uh, this this guidebook is incredible, although it's very dangerous because once you see what's in there, you will want all of it and uh, you will love all of it. And so there's a word of warning there before I get started into that. I've put a couple of other books out here too. This one, the Aurora uh, Slot Car book here by Thomas Graham. This is a fascinating look into the history of these cars. And um, I don't know why I have that one there. It's more of the AFX, were, which, were, which came later after the run of the Thunder Jets here. Um, but fascinating books. That's the international markets. And this one is more about the history. But this one goes way, way into the, um, all the different color variations and all the different models of Thunder Jets that were made. And this, if you're going to start collecting, pick this book up first. I know it's the, probably the cost of a, a slot car, but get this one started to get you started and you'll be on your way. Now, after I looked through the book, I determined that I would like one of every model made. And that's how I approached it. I wanted just one representative so I can hold in my hand you know, one, uh, you know, J car, or just, just know what it was, see up close and personal what they were. And that was what I really wanted. And like anything else, collection, collections can take years, maybe decades to get you started and you get moving, but that's part of the fun in it. When you see something that you don't have and that you want, there you go. That's another one you can add to the collection and let it build over time. Um, now, as far as the color variations, I'm not interested in the color variations. I mean, it's great. It would be great to have, you know, all 15, <laughs> you know, Falcons or whatever, 10 different color variations and different whatever. But to me, having the one representative is all that matters to me as far as collecting these. And um, I, to me, my whole collection is the variation of the colors so it's uh, the collection as a whole um, has features all the different colors i'm not sure i never actually look through that to make sure i do have all the color variations but once i do then i'm satisfied with that and that's not something that's that hard to do you know you have reds and yellows and different shades of greens and and blacks and blues and so that's just something when I look at step back and look at the collection as a whole, there it is right there. And all the color variations are there. So there's that. <laughs> um, now I've put out here just, just for the sake of, um, uh, the video, just, uh, the predecessors of the Aurora Thunderjets were 
these and others like them. There were the vibrators, the Aurora vibrators, and I've done a video on these in the past, so you can check that out. And other people have done videos, and they're very interesting and, and unique cars. Uh, they didn't make as many as they did of the Thunder Jets, but still very fascinating. And you know, these were made in the late 50s, early 60s. And in the case of the Thunder Jets, you know, I was born in late 63. These things were being made before I was born. And what's fascinating to me is that I'd love to know what the history was on some of these cars. You know, th this one, say, this per in particular. Now, this could have been owned by a child who is uh, no longer with us or who is elderly now, but in early 60s, this was a child who loved this car, took it around his track, put it up on his shelf in his room, and had this for years and took care of it and then maybe sold it to a friend when he became an adult. Who knows what the history is? Each one of these cars has a story that goes back 50 to 60 years. And that is fascinating to me. Um, just that they survived, for one thing, many didn't survive. And like I had said, I've ma they made millions of these things and plenty didn't survive. Plenty got thrown away by parents after kids went off to college. Um, after people got married, they ditched them, gave them away to other people who didn't take care of them, things like that, and eventually things get whittled down. Thankfully, there still are plenty of good versions left. And uh, let me tell you real quick, when you are looking for one of these cars, also determine what condition you'd like it in. Now, if you're going to take them around the track, if you just want a couple, like say you're a 130 second scale racer and you want to try these after you watch this video, you want to take it for a spin, pick up a couple, maybe pick up four if you have a four lane track you can pick up a four lane HO track for cheap. You don't need cars with it. Just get the track and then pick up a few of these and you could pick up some runners, you know, some beat up cars and take them around and see how you like them and you might just enjoy them. And if you do come, become a collector, that's great. But if not, you still get the experience and the joy. But things to look for are with the window post. Those are the first things to go usually that just make sure that they don't look um, repaired, you know, glued and or missing, uh, little splits in them. That's that's one of the first things to look for. Make sure the bumpers are on, you know, and any kind of spots or fading or scratches. I'm not saying all these cars are pristine by no means, but they're all pretty decent, I think. Uh, here and there, there may be some imperfection, and I may point that out to you if I notice it as I'm going through them. But uh, that's that's something to look for and you know missing windshields or missing drivers or drivers with their heads broken off are common um, now with that being said there's there are people who make reproductions of a lot of these pieces so don't be discouraged if you break off something there's somebody who's making a reproduction of it bumpers and windshields and drivers of all sizes and uh, they do a great job of it. And um, I would not let th that discourage you if you have the patience and you find something here for cheap and you want to restore it a little bit, you can have that done. And um, yeah, with that being said, uh, let's get into it. Um, starting with this book, this fascinating book. Um, open up the page here to the Thunder Jets. And my memory is awful as compared to someone like uh, Scott from Scott's House of HO Racing, who's a walking, in, walking encyclopedia. And um, he could tell you things by looking at a car. He could tell you the whole story of it. Me, I don't have the memory. So um, and check out Scott's House of HO Racing and, and you'll, you'll enjoy yourself. And he'll talk about uh, you know plenty of HO slot cars. He's a real expert. And also uh, Patriot Hobbies, if you want to know the history of Aurora, um, in addition to these two books, he's, he's got many, many stories that he reads and uh, relates and, um, about the history of slot cars. And I would highly suggest, if you're into this, to go check out Patriot Hobbies. Uh, go like and subscribe to his videos. Excellent, excellent work there. Um, 
okay, let's get into this. Um, now, I'm not um, an expert on this, and I just want to let you know that. And I don't have a great memory, and I want you to know that. So I'm going to run through these. Uh, and as I was doing my inventory, I left some spaces here for the cars that I don't have yet. Now, with any collector, it's always a work in progress. So it, this is a work in progress. There's no timeline. I'm not setting myself to finish this by the end of the year. This could take years. It's fine. I have a lot that, I'm, uh, uh, that I've accomplished, so I'm happy with it. And if you're just getting started and you just like this section of cars here, hey, let's go over these and you can see what you like and you can pick these up. These are constantly on um, auction sites. And um, you can find these if you, if you search hard enough and they'll come around. If you miss one, they'll come around again because there were plenty made. I'm not sure how this um, hobby of slot cars is going to progress in the future. Um, there's, there's a worry that a lot of the people that collect are now getting in, in advanced years. Now, I've just turned 60, so I'm a little bit on the younger side. And um, but uh, of <laughs> not not in life, but in collectors of these, uh, there could be a lot of people who are in their 80s and they're passing away and leaving these cars to their relatives or whoever's inheriting them. And those people are not interested in or selling them off. So there could be more cars hitting the market and which would bring the prices down. So that's that's a concern. But um if you're in this for an investment, I would suggest don't be in this for an investment. Be in this because you love it. Be in this because you love these cars. You love watching them go around the track. And uh, you'd want to grab them before if they do go up in value and they don't stop going up in value. You want to be able to get some before it goes too high to be in anybody's budget. Who knows where this is going to go? Now, as people are passing away and leaving their cars, that's less people in the hobby. But also, there are more people coming into the hobby every day. Now, with if you see all the amount of YouTube video creators and the amount of traffic on, on the slot car websites, it is a growing hobby. And there are more people that from like me who were basically, I was born in the early 60s, but I, I basically got started in slot cars in the 70s with the Aurora AFX and then into Tyco and all that stuff. And there's a lot of people like me coming up behind that first generation that are willing to invest in these now and love these. And like me in that same situation, it's before their time in a way, but they discover it. Like hopefully a lot of you do watching this video discover this and say, this is for me too. And so there's a lot coming up behind that next generation. And those people are getting involved. Those people are close to retirement age now and now have the funds that they never had when they were kids or younger adults when they were raising a family. Now their children are grown and they have, you know, an empty house and looking for hobbies. They're recently retired or coming up to being retired. There's a lot coming up now at that age, you know, 50s, 60s, and 70s, a lot that are going to want these cars. So in my opinion, I think the value is going to stay the same. And even at that, I think it may increase a little bit because there's going to be less cars available as time goes on through regular attrition. You know, you drop a car and it breaks and you throw it away. You know, I'm not going to do that. I'll try to repair it. But other people have to throw it away. So that's one less car now in the in the history of the world that's existing. And uh, so that's something to keep in mind that, that through that, the number of cars is not going to get any um, more. It's not going to increase unless they find some hidden in a warehouse somewhere, which I guess happens every so often. But I don't know if too much of that happens anymore. Um, so this is this is it. Whatever is available and whatever is getting passed around is it and um so that's how i think it's going to possibly increase and again don't look at this as an investment if these are an investment to you it's better to get some stocks or you know whatever 
get a you know someone to help you with that or do some investing on your own if you're if you have the wherewithal and i would stay away from having these as an investment because you you may increase in your value and may decrease but the the entire point of this is to get these because you enjoy them all right now this is going on a lot longer than i anticipated but let's get into this now i'm going to use this book as a reference because i've you know i have a terrible memory so i'm doing my inventory so i want you to come along and help me as i check along what's what's happening here the the first one the 1351 model here is the ford galaxy 500 xl and i have this one here in red and you could see the value there is oh it's this one here it's a two which when this book was created a few years ago that's how many they estimated nobody knows for sure on what's available but the availability is a two one being the scarcest with five being the most common and that don't let that affect your value in fact i'm not going to go through all that i'm just showing you here what it shows in the book um the the two might have been when this book was created and since then a bunch of these have surfaced and now this could be a five who knows so don't go by the number it's a just to just use it as sort of a guide just to let you know what you may be looking at but not as a bible you know so this is the first one now uh the ford galaxy uh, the uh hard top i do not have that Hence, I have the space here being held for that. And as I said, this is an ongoing collection. So that'll hopefully happen in time. And I'm having fun along the way. So it's not anything that's that's very urgent. Um, okay, uh, here's the Ford Fairlane uh, hardtop, the 1353. And you could see it... I believe this one right there and beautiful cars then we have the Ford Falcon hardtop and next the 63 Thunderbird Roadster and that needs to be added to my collection so we're going to skip past that for now next one up is the 63 corvette stingray the 63 buick riviera the xke jaguar The Indianapolis Racer, <laughs> and I dropped it. They, these are not as fragile as you may think. They're, they're 60 years old, but they could take a little bit of a, a lick. As you can see that, I just dropped it, and it's fine. Very, uh, very nice to know that these can, uh, these can handle that. Um, then there is the chromed the plated Indianapolis racer. And you'll notice on, on the numbers on a lot of the Aurora Thunderjet cars are the numbers that don't close within themselves, um, such as a four or a six or an eight or a nine or a zero to where there's an inside part of that number. Numbers like a two are fine because they can get you know into that there's no isolated part of that number so i don't think you'll ever find a car that's with those numbers that are that have that isolated part and that's because they would have to run it through a couple of times when they were you know doing those numbers the process of making those numbers so all of those numbers are are pretty uh, uh similar across the board for all their cars um now we have another one that's similar to the Indianapolis racer. It's the Grand Prix racer. And you see it right there. And now we get into some trucks. 
There's the Mac dump truck. Fascinating little vehicle. And the Mac steak truck. And these come in the various variations. And now we have the International Wrecker tow truck. Unique car. These did not come with the hook. Um, you can create one if you want, I can imagine, and, and tow another car around. Um, interesting thing about this one in particular is that if you see on top there, there's a horn where you see that m these featured here have the light on top. That's a non-functioning light. But the horn is a carryover from one of the... Um, the vibrator series they had that the truck and without the boom or without the back of it and so that's a carryover I guess they had some of these left over and they put they added on to make that a tow truck so this this one is kind of unique I would imagine that it's uh, it's got the horn so that's that's a very fascinating to me um, now we have the I'm sorry about the glare from the lights the Hot Rod Roadster, and uh, this may have um, aftermarket pieces put on. Not sure about that, and I'm fine with it if they are. I'm not a stickler for that. Um, it would be great if you found one in pristine, unique, <laughs> original condition, but if you need to add on a driver, and as long as it looks good in there, and uh, everything looks fine where it should be, then I'm fine with that. Okay, and we have the Hot Rod Coupe. And no driver in that one, no driver featured in that one, unlike the Hot Rod Roadster. Kind of interesting how they put some drivers in some of their cars, not in all. Um, then we have the Maserati. Oops, sorry, wrong car. The Maserati. I have one without the stripe. Beautifully done car. Very, very nice. Very beautiful car. And uh, I also, if you've noticed, I've brought some of the Auto World cars out here. Auto World has done a fascinating job with these cars. And these are Thunder Jets too, and I'm going to talk about them after I'm done running through some of these and get my collection in order here. Okay, now here's the Ford 250 GTO. Beautifully done car. Just fascinating car. And the classic Lincoln Continental. Next is the AC Cobra. Very nicely done. I think this is where uh, Auto World falls short a little bit in their bodies. Let me bring this one over here. There's a Cobra that Auto World has done. And it just doesn't, it doesn't have the driver and it sits up higher and it's got as uh, slot cars and HO trains has coined uh, the uh, what is that effect the four-wheel drive effect um, so that was the uh, Cobra now we have the Mustang convertible excellent job with this beautiful looking car And let's see the page here. Now there's the Mustang hardtop, which I don't have, hence the space right there. We'll take the next one, which is the Mustang, the 64 and a half Mustang Fastback. You can see that. And the Ford GT.
No, I'm sorry. That's not the Ford GT. I don't have the Ford GT. Make a note to self. There's no Ford GT yet. I have that in other variations. And that that will explain why I do have some pieces missing. When I first was say, running through saying that I don't need to collect every color, every variation, there are some other variations we're going we're to talk about shortly on why I don't have that and why that's not a real urgency for me to collect. Nothing is an urgency, but you know what I mean. So here's the, uh, the Cobra GT. This is more like it. The funky looking front end on that, but pretty interesting in its own right. And here's the Porsche 904, which according to this book, all the paperwork that Aurora has calls this the Porsche 906, but it is a 904. All right, and here's the Chaparral, the 1377 version of it. I have this in white, or in a cream, I should say. Uh, there it is there. There's plenty of these, as you could see. And this continued on this page, and so it's that one right there, the number five. And the Lola GT, which I have spaces for here because, again, I have them in a different version. And the Toronado, I don't have at all, so that's definitely one to collect. Uh, in the future. And here's the Mako Shark. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I say that a lot, but it's beautiful. And just to know, these are 50 to 60 years old. It's just, it's incredible. It's just really incredible. Um, now we have the, the Dino Ferrari, which um, I don't have in my collection. I have it in another version, which uh, sneak peek. Um, this is again why I don't have certain cars. Uh, here's the Ford J car. Very nice job and details on that. There's the 67 Thunderbird. That was continued from down there. And now here's something very interesting, interesting, the Green Hornet, which I have this, it's, it's pretty pristine. And I have a question, I might do a survey after this. I have these reproduction stickers. Now, I'm debating if I should put these stickers on. Should I put those stickers on or should I just leave it pure the way I guess it's always been? Looks like it's a... Uh, it's pretty pretty secure on top there that nothing's been on there, but maybe maybe there has, there was, and now it's rubbed off. But I have reproduction stickers. Would you think I should put those on? Would you put those on? Now, the pros, it's a, it's a green hornet. You want it to look like a green hornet. Otherwise, it's a black. Um, what is this, a Riviera? Um, yeah, and the cons are, it's, it's pristine. Leave it that way. Maybe it never had the sticker. So don't put the sticker on it. Why put a sticker on something? And only to have to maybe peel off the sticker, scrape it off in the future and put a different one on. I don't know. That's that's something up for debate. But that's the Green Hornet. Uh, accompanying the Green Hornet is the Batmobile. With uh, Batman and Robin in there, if you could see them. They're not colored. Now, Johnny Lightning has made a version of this where they, they color them in, in Auto World. Um, they color them, and they've made this in all different colors. They've, they've really capitalized on this one because it's very popular. This is from the 1966, I believe, TV series, 66, 68 or so, uh, TV series of Batman, which I grew up with and loved. And uh, this one was fascinating in that um, my parents took me down to see, took me and my brother down to see Batman making his appearance with the Batmobile one time. We lived in uh, New York City and this was in, uh, I lived in Brooklyn and this was in Queens where this happened. Batman made an appearance 
and he drove up in the Batmobile and I was little and I was so scared that I was eating ice cream. My mother had treated us to some ice cream and when Batman showed up, the crowd went crazy and I got so scared that I hugged my mom and she was wearing a nice white dress and I got the ice cream all over her dress and uh, yeah, <laughs> so that's my Batman story from back then. Um, fascinating car. Now here's the uh, 67 Ford Galaxy XL, which definitely needs to be added into my collection. And the very, very interesting Thunderbike. The Aurora Thunderbike. And these go surprisingly well. Uh, I'll, I'll do a follow-up video in the near future where I'll run some of these cars around the track and you can see how they actually move. Um, but that's that's a fascinating one. Um, now there's the uh, the Camaro missing my from my collection in this pure basic version. You'll see later on what I'm talking about, like as in the others. And a Cougar, which I love the Mercury Cougar. And I don't have any of these in the basic form. Um, here's the uh, Candy Corvette. They made a bunch of candy co uh, cars, uh, Jaguars, Corvettes, the Ferrari, and I don't collect those. I don't know how well the candy versions have held up over the years. I, it doesn't interest me, so I don't have any of that. Um, if anything, I might buy something new that maybe Auto World puts out, but I, I'm just not interested in that the the farthest i'll go is this chrome version and I, I i see this come up and it's in very bad shape a lot you know the the chrome is really you know time is doing a number on it so far this one is in great shape so i'm satisfied with that so i don't think i'm gonna be i'm gonna be picking up any more any chrome uh candy stuff i should say but they did make them and uh also the cobra gt and uh getting back now to the regular series here, the McLaren Elva, which I absolutely love this car. I'm going to say that a lot, but I mean it. So it's okay to say it when I mean it, that I love these cars. Um, then we have the Dune Buggy Roadster. And as you can see, there's some a bad spot in the, gra in the glass there. So and that windshield needs to be replaced, but fortunately that is being reproduced and that could be replaced. So that's a little side project over time is to get that thing replaced and maybe get those numbers off of there. So a nice little car, the Doom Buggy Roadster. All right, now there's the Doom Buggy Coupe, which is similar to that, but it's got that top, which Again, I have in a different form. Nothing in these basic forms. I'm not. I shouldn't call them basic, but the the original forms. Um, now we have the Mangusta Mongoose, which I I love this. I'm going to say it again. I love this. It looks like the observation deck on a train, on a train car, and uh, that's fascinating to me. The Mangusta Mongoose. And here we have the Willys Gasser. Nice representation of that car. Very nice car. And the Pontiac Firebird, the original versions of them. Not in my collection, unfortunately. And the original versions of the Cheetah. Not in my collection, but both are uh, later. Um, here is the, now this one is incredible, these Volkswagen with the flowers, and that I love. I just love this car, and it's so late 60s with the flower power and flower children, it's incredible. And if you're into that, if you're into the VW bugs and, you know, things like that, that that's a car for you right there um now we have let's get into some racers here I'll reach over here sorry about the glare we have the uh the mclaren brm formula one and uh 
That's a nice racy car. And also the Repco Brabham Formula One. Very nice detail on these cars. Now, let me put these back. Now this one is, oh no, never mind. But I needed to put a um, piece on that, but I think it has it. All right, now there's the Dodge Charger, which this is a very valuable car, very costly car. Um, so I would say this one's going to cost a pretty penny. So that's not in my collection, but it's beautiful. There's more Chargers. And for Torino, those are kind of hard to come by as well. And then we get into the Alfa Romeo. Fascinating, fascinating, beautiful, beautiful car. The Alfa Romeo. And I love that. I love the color on that. They did a fantastic job with that. All right. And try not to lose my place here. And then we have the Chaparral 2F which I don't have that version of it. And it seems like that's the, uh, the only one of its kind. It's the number one. That'll, that'll come up later on though. Uh, the GTO convertible, fantastic. These Pontiac GTOs are beautiful. Not in my collection. The, um, the AMX, one of my favorite cars. And I don't have that in its basic, in its original form. Uh, I do have them, as you'll see later on, sneak peek, and also much later in the auto world. Auto world's done a fantastic job with them, and uh, they look great. And um, yeah, so no, I don't have them, but I do have the the form of the AMX, the AMC AMX. So I'm happy with that. If they come my way, even better. Then there's the Mustang Mach 1 body, which that's pretty hard to come by. And fascinating, beautiful car. And now we get into the wild ones. We have the Mustang Fastback 2 plus 2. Great version of that. The 4 GT. These are the wild ones, and they're wild because, well, this doesn't have it, but they're supposed to have thicker tires. I have to do a little inventory on my tires. That's another thing to look for when you do have some of these cars. I should have mentioned up front that a lot of kids and racers and adults and whoever had these in the 60s and throughout, um, if they use them as racers, they modified them with the fatter tires, and when they did that, the wheel wells would catch on the tires, the tires would catch on the wheel wells, so they modified the wheel wells, they scraped it out a bit, and that, um, that diminishes the value of it. So that's another thing to look for. Unless you're into it, if you want the fat wheels and you want to race them, that's great. Look for a car that's, that's scratched and got broken, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, things are broken on it and no bumpers and, and wheel wells are carved out. Some people did a great job carving them out very professional to where you can't tell um, and if that's the case that's fine with me if I have if I have to struggle to tell some of these may have carved wheel wells I don't think so maybe slightly if they do but that's fine if I have a hard time if I have to squint to tell or look at pictures and compare I don't care it I just want it and it's great and for the most part I think they're in good shape um, now that was the GT. Now, here comes the Wild Camaro, the Wild Ones Camaro. It's the number two. They've only made one of these. And again, I have to check on my tires. Uh, chassis to me aren't as important, aren't really important at all. I just make sure that they run. Every chassis has, I have, I make sure it's in running order. I lubricate it. Make sure that everything's running good. Doesn't have to set world records, land speed records or anything. It just has to run and run pretty decently. Um, if I need to change pickup shoes, I'll, I'll order some more pickup shoes and, and get them done. This is the part one, just establishing what I have and get them, getting them all in order. Um, 
yeah so chassis not important but they can be to you so look for chassis that run if that's important to you you could probably find a chassis for 30 35 dollars at minimum that runs and works well uh, maybe you can get one a little cheaper uh, maybe you find a car that's beat up but has a nice chassis you can grab that and now you have a nice chassis for cheap um, many different ways to approach this now here's the Cougar, the Mercury Cougar, which I didn't have in the original form, but this is where I have it. So I have this body mold uh, in the Wild Ones, and that's the number three Cougar. One of my favorite cars ever. Um, now here's a very interesting one, very unique, a 1932 Ford pickup truck. And these were very well done. Nice detail on that. Very nice. Um, one thing you have to keep in mind when you are looking for these cars also is that there have been a lot of excellent reproductions by different companies over the years. And some are so well done that you can't even tell what's an Aurora Thunderjet original and what's a Dash or a Johnny Lightning or Auto World has even, you know, done things. So just be careful, look very closely, study them and see what you can come up with and, uh, see what you want and what matters to you if it doesn't have to be original if it could be a dash and it looks just like it that could be fine with you that's great now here's a case this is the el camino and uh this is a, a pretty highly sought after car um the only thing with this is that i don't have the original uh, surfboard for it that's a reproduction surfboard um which is fine for me right now. It's got the surfboard on it. It's fine at some point. If I do come across the, an original one, I'll replace it and put the surfboard on it. Not a big issue to me. Maybe it's an issue to you. So make sure you do get those original surfboards if that's what you're into. Uh, then there's uh, flamethrower cars, which uh, are different um, different versions of what we have here. Only the the headlight is open and so for the light to come through on the flamethrower version of these cars not an important thing to me so i just like i said i like the uh the molds i like to collect the molds the different variations not too keen on at this point uh variations i am keen on though are the tough ones just like the wild ones they have a series of tough ones and there's the Lola, and here's the Ford GT. Oh, here's another Lola, sorry. And the Ford GT, and very, very beautiful done, beautifully done. Great detail on this. I have to tell you a story about these two. These were what piqued my curiosity on Thunder Jets to begin with, because I was a kid in the 70s, and my friends and I were very, very, very much into the Aurora, you know, the AFX. And we would go around to flea markets, seeing if we could pick up cars. And I picked up a box of parts and things for AFX. And these two were in that box. And I had no idea what they were. They didn't really appeal to me. They're smaller. And they just, I don't know why at the time, it just didn't appeal to me. So I had these two bodies and they were just bare chassis just bare chassis and a body uh, for both of them and but i kept them and all these years they just sat there along with my collection just sitting there and when i got back into this a few years back i saw these and i said let me try to restore them they were they're pretty interesting after all you know and i'd like to know the history of what came before AFX and it's like that got me into this rabbit hole these two right here so I got the parts for it parts are available the the brushes and the you know everything is available for it and um, uh, you know it needs to be cleaned up a bit which I will do um, so you can restore these if you just find a bare chassis the bodies are the most important things and uh, you can go from there. But that's that's my story on how I got into this. It was, it was those two cars right there. And uh, continuing with the Tough One series. Now, this one is the Doom Buggy Coupe. 
which I don't have the Doom Buggy regular, but this is the coupe, um, you know, the Doom Buggy coupe with uh, the lemon with the black and uh, the blue and white stripes. There were back in the book, there were other stripe colors, which were the regular releases. So this is the Tough Ones release. And you saw the Willies before, and this is the Willies Tough Ones version. All right, and then there is the Cheetah Tough Ones. Very, very beautiful car. Very well done. And coming, winding our way down here, there's the Chaparral 2F Tough Ones. I need that one. Don't have that one in the line with the blue. But I do have this one. And you see they come in different various shades of white. I think that's not an original wing there. Uh, it looks a little too low, but that'll sit for now. I'm satisfied with that for now, but eventually that's going to get replaced. And the AMX Tough Ones. These were beautiful cars. Beautiful. I love these little cars. Maybe not so much in real life, but as slot cars, I love them. I remember when I was a kid, I had a series of drag racing uh, trading cards, you know, I used to collect baseball cards, but I found these drag racing trading cards and they featured one of these uh, AMX cars on one of the cards. And I was like, I really like that. So that's what got me into that and beautifully done. Very nicely detailed cars. All right, and then there's the Firebird, which this one always reminded me of the AFX Firebird, not the Firebird, but it was a Dodge Daytona, I believe, with the, the long, with the extended wing. And this one just looked like it to me, with the, it was yellow with the black. And uh, so that one fascinates me. I love that one. It's got a special place for me. Um, then there's... There's also a couple other variations of them, which uh, I'd like to pick up at some point. Um, maybe not so much the, the different color. I'm not keen on just a slight, slight pale version of one that I have. So maybe not like that one, maybe not that one, maybe that one. Um, and here's the Cougar, the Mercury Cougar, one of my favorites. And uh, going back to Auto World real quick, they made uh, they made a beautiful cougar here. They've done really nice um, versions of these cars. And so, if this doesn't interest you, then then maybe Auto World is more for you. They're more highly detailed, more modern, and they could take a looking, and you can actually drive them around, and they'll be fine. Where these, you may be afraid that you might break them if they fall off the table or something. All right, um, now. Continuing with the tough ones are this Camaro. Very nice job on that. And this Dino Ferrari. Like I had mentioned before, I don't have the, uh, the original release of the Dino Ferraris yet, but I have this Dino and this with the Italian colors is fantastic. Just beautiful, just beautiful. And also we have the Volkswagen, the VW Bug, Tough Ones version. Very nice job with that. Great deal, detail. If you love the VWs, that's for you. Um, and then we have the Sand Van, the Dune Buggy. Going back to the regular versions. That, that was the end of the Tough Ones right there. Now we have the Sand Ones Dune Buggy. Uh, the Sand Van Dune Buggy. And this one is the pink, and it came in a variety of colors. And the super modified Roadsters. I don't have them yet. They're very expensive. Watch out because Dash makes a version of them that looks just like them. And it's so incredibly hard to tell that I just gave in. And I think Jag Hobby sells these, these shells, these bodies, for maybe $13, $15 a piece. So I bought four of them to have a four-car race on the track and I got some Auto World bodies and I mean uh, Auto World chassis, the Thunderjet chassis from Auto World and I removed the magnets on them so they'll drift and you can have a lot of fun with those. I didn't put the uh, bumpers on the front or the back so this way I figure they're going to break anyway but I have them. 
So those are for racing purposes. They're beautifully done uh, by Dash, and um, that's going to be how I take out my uh, racing frustrations on my Thunderjet cars because I'm not going to touch these for races, maybe not even the Auto World cars, but those are the ones, and they're readily available, so that's fine with me. And, um, yeah. <laughs> All right, so I don't have any of the original um, super modified roadsters, but that may come. Who knows? And here's a very interesting character, the snowmobile. I made a few variations with that, opposite colors and things. Um, so this is my representative of the snowmobile, and you can see it's way, way out of scale. But it runs on the track, and it's fine. And now we have the good humor truck. The Wild Huckleberry Good Humor Truck. And uh, if you do get these, make sure that the stickers are in the right places. They do make reproduction stickers of these. I have no way to tell if these are reproductions or originals. I suspect they're originals because this is kept was kept in pristine condition. So I think it's original. If not, it's great for me because I can't tell. If, if, it's, if it happens to be a reproduction and affects the value to whoever inherits and wants to sell my collection 50 years from now, that's fine. They're getting all this as a bonus. So whatever they want to do with it is fine. That's the way I look at it. Um, and then there's the flamethrower versions, which are the same as the other previous ones, only flamethrowers. They have lights and they have the open you know, headlight um, capabilities there. Four GTs and Cobras, flamethrowers, and the San Van Du buggy. So that's it for, for the Aurora Thunder Jets. Um, and thank you for helping me go through my collection to see what I have and I can sort things out. Now time to tune them up, make sure they're all running, give them a little shot of oil, and um, put them back in their cases, which I store everything in here. I have a couple of cases for them. These are... Very basic. I get them at the Dollar Tree, I think, for I think a dollar and a quarter now, even though it's called the Dollar Tree. Um, and so I have all my HO cars in these, and I keep them all in their sides. And you can fit plenty of cars in here, plenty of cars. And uh, I don't transport these around, so they're not moving. They're not, you know juggling around in there and scraping each other up. Although some of you might be saying, ah, maybe that's not the greatest. It works for me. I'm careful as I transport it and it goes under my, my uh, Carrera track in my other room. So it's always in climate control and it's, it's not being moved around or jostled. If I, have to, if I have to have a move, a serious move, I will wrap these up individually. But as it is now, I transport them carefully. I'm in the garage now, transport them back into the room and underneath the table and everything is fine there uh, so those can handle quite a few cars if you have a large collection that does the trick they're all you know you can label them i usually put a label right here oh, there they were with thunder jets and uh, have my own little codes and things for how i store them and uh, this way someone even though I print out a sheet of what I have in my collection for whoever inherits it, if I pass away suddenly, they'll know what I have. They'll know how, I, how to identify everything and they'll know, okay, these cars in this container are the Aurora Thunder Jets and these two containers and, uh, you know, the, the um, Auto World Thunder Jets have a container or two and everything is labeled. I don't have to label each individual car. That's something they'll have to go and see. You know, these are, they'll have to make sure this is an El Camino. They'll look it up. Oh, yeah, blue El Camino, gray El Camino. They'll have to identify that. So they'll have to do some work, but it'll, it should pay off for them. So I'm not worried about that. If you do want to learn more about what happens, what's going to happen to your collections, when you pass away. Um, I did make a video about that. It's probably almost as long as this one. Uh, I didn't intend for this to be so long, but I just, there's so much to talk about. And I apologize if, if you're still with me, all that, that's, that's fantastic. And I really appreciate that. And um, 
yeah, so uh, I did make a video about what happens to your slot cars and how to arrange things and how to make it easier for whoever, whoever inherits your collection to distinguish what you have. And this way they get the maximum value out of it and not sell everything. Here you go. I'll sell this at a garage sale for $10. Someone will say, I'll give you eight. Okay, take it all for eight. Meanwhile, they're losing out on, you know, quite a bit of money. So I really strongly suggest you look into that video. I might leave a link for that in the description if I can remember. Um, so that's that. That's the world of the Aurora Thunder Jets. Thank you for helping me sort through my collection. And I brought out these. Um, these also are they came out after the Aurora cars, the Aurora Thunder Jets, but they're modeled in the same fashion. But these are slotless versions. And they're also in the book. Um, later on in the book, this one covers all of that, including all the uh, the vibrators. And um, it doesn't go into the auto world. I don't think there's any book yet for auto world, but there there are some good sites that have um, where you can see the collections of auto world cars and good videos on them. And they've done a fantastic job. Very fascinating thing. And I'm glad auto world is keeping. The trend going of keeping these cars alive and making them available to younger collectors or newer collectors that that don't have access to to the older ones or don't have an interest in the older ones but they like cars that they can run and not have to worry about damaging you can pick up a couple of these most are still readily available and uh these are just some of them uh i have many more also that i'm not bringing out these are my favorite ones so I, I got them out here to, uh, to root on the Aurora Thunder Jets for this video. So thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. And for the half a person who's still with me, who's probably sleeping right now, thank you so much for letting the video run and snoring um, and covering my uh, madness with your snoring. I appreciate that. Time to wake up now because your computer is probably going to overheat or your laptop or your phone because it just keeps running this video. So thank you so much. Time for me to go now. It's been over an hour. And uh, those are the Aurora Thunder Jets. This is Slot Cars What Character, Episode 21. And thank you so much. Have a great day.